Welcome to another exam paper walkthrough. Uh, today we're looking at a slightly different paper. We're looking at the Edexcel have produced a series of aiming for grade papers. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, and the one that I'm looking at today is the aiming for a grade four. And we're looking at the paper one version. Uh, it's a very modern paper. Uh, this was brought out spring 2023. Um, and you can see from the, the date at the bottom of the screen that today is spring 2023. Uh, so very modern paper. Uh, most modern style that I could find. Um, so we'll start off. Um, I'll do this recording of videos in chunks of about uh, 10 questions. Um, I've just had a look through there. Are, I think there are 33 questions. So I think my last video will be uh, 13 questions. Um, I might avoid that, make it less unlucky. Um, but we'll start off. Um, if we just look at some basic advice, um, see what the advice is here. Uh, there's nothing particularly different. Uh, it says that there are 32 questions. Questions have been arranged in ascending order of mean difficulty as found by students achieving grade four in the summer and November 2022 examinations. Um, the mark for each question is shown in brackets. Use this as a guide for how much time to spend on each question. I find that a really useful bit of information. Uh, that's what I tell students a lot. Um, we are going to be... Uh, I've, Responding to some feedback I've had, I'm not going to go through the mark scheme so much. I'm just going to kind of answer the question, check it on the mark scheme and then move on. Uh, people have said that they've not found um, the actual where the marks come from as useful as just going through the questions. OK, um, so. Here we go, then question one on the grid, reflect the shape, the triangle in the mirror line. So we've got a mirror line drawn. Um, so if we're reflecting it, um, these two points are already on the mirror line, so they're not going to move. This is the only one that would move, and this is currently three squares away, perpendicular away from the mirror line, so it'll go three to the other side. Um, and then from there, we join it up with the ruler. OK, um, question two. So I'll check the answers every page or so, um, and I'll just kind of mark it real quick. Uh, work out two to the power sorry three to the power two well that means three times by three uh, so that would be six and for the next one work out 20 divided by three plus two so this is order of operations what we do in the brackets uh, what's in the bracket needs to be done first so we're going to treat that as 20 divided by three plus two is five and then 20 divided by five is four and question and that's it for the page i'll just check the mark scheme and we are going, and I've made a mistake really early on in the paper, three times by three. I was thinking about saying a uh, common misconception is that it's three times two. I read three times three and then I wrote six instead of nine. Um, right, uh, mark scheme. So we've got, we just got one mark for that, one mark for that, one mark for that. OK, uh, question four then. Uh, here is the sequence of patterns made from grey square tiles. Uh, on the grid below, draw the pattern number five. Um, so each one is kind of three pattern is an L shape, three by three, four by four. So five is going to be five by five. I'm just going to grab a ruler. Just to try and make this as neat as I can. So um, I'll pick a point to start at. We'll start there. So we've got plenty of space and I'm going five squares down. Two, three, four, five. Is that five? Three, four, five. Five squares across. So that's going to be my fifth pattern. Um, complete the table, and we've got we're asked for the numbers. Uh, so uh, we can clearly see one here, three here, five here seven here uh, so this one is going to be nine we can count them but we can spot the pattern uh, we're kind of going up by odd numbers so the next pattern would be pattern uh, would have 11 squares okay um write down the value of six oh, and we'll quickly look at the mark scheme so the mark scheme says there we go so it's one mark for each OK, uh, question five, write down the value of the six in the number one thousand six hundred. Uh, sorry, sixteen thousand and seven. Uh, so that would be six thousand. 
Uh, you can write it in words or you can write it in numbers. I tend to write it in numbers. Just being a mathematician, I don't really like writing words. Question six, Simon buys some candles. Each candle costs two pounds. Simon pays with a 20 pound note. He gets six pounds change. Work out the number of candles that Simon buys. Um, so if each candle, I'm going to call the number of candles Simon buys N. Well, we're saying in effect, uh, each N costs two pounds plus six is equal to 20. So you might not have set it up this way, but you will have in effect done the same process. So we're going to minus six from both sides. So we would say that 2N is equal to 14. And then divide both sides by two would give us N is equal to seven. So he would buy seven candles. You can always go backwards and check. So seven times by two is 14 and 20 take away 14 would be six. So that definitely works. Um, and in terms of the marks, we'll do it dead quick. So it is one mark for uh, showing 14. One mark for dividing that value by two. And then one mark for the seven. Right, uh, question seven, uh, y is equal to six x minus five. Work out the value of y when x is equal to four. So y is gonna be equal to six times by four minus five, which would give us 24, take away five, which gives us 19. And should, marked slightly out of order on the last one, um, but we are picking up one mark for showing 24 and then one mark for the 19. Right, uh, question eight, write these numbers in order of size, starting with the smallest. So I would convert them all into decimals. So half is gonna be 0 0.5. We've already got that one as decimal and 45% of the decimal would be 0 0.45. So writing them in order, 45% would be the smallest followed by a half, followed by 0.55. And question eight, pictogram gives information about the number of hours of sunshine on a Saturday and on a Sunday. Work out the number of hours of sunshine on Saturday. Well, the pictogram says that one full sun represents two hours of sunshine. So on Saturday, we had one, two, three, four um, uh, suns. So it would be four times by two which would give us eight hours of sunshine. And that's it for the page. So uh, for question eight, our marks came from, it is just one mark for the correct answer. But question nine, we're looking at one mark for eight. Right, question 10. Uh, there are 15 sweets in a jar, Four of the sweets are red. Jill takes at random a sweet from the jar, right? The probability that the sweet is red. So we've got four red sweets. And we've got in total 15 sweets in the jar. That's four out of 15. And part B, there are only green counters and blue counters in a bag. The probability is, uh, sorry, a counter is taken at random from the bag. The probability that the counter is green is 0 0.3. Find the probability that the counter is blue. Well, the counters, the probabilities of it being green or being blue must add up to one. So it's going to be one minus 0 0.3, which would give us 0 0.7. And where did the marks come? We've got one mark for that and one mark for that. Fairly straightforward. And that brings us to question 11. So I'll stop the video and restart shortly.